so up till now in the first uh, part of this course we have discussed uh, basically regular languages and these regular languages how they can be identified with help of various finite state machines so we have discussed finite state machines that are dfa nfa and nfnl and various problems based on these finite state machines we have discussed we have also discussed that there are four types of languages a regular language then we have context free language we have context sensitive language and unrestricted language with each of these language we have corresponding grammars stated as a regular grammar context free grammar context sensitive grammar and unrestricted grammar we have seen various types of context free grammar in our third unit and we have also discussed about regular grammar now in this fourth unit we are going to discuss different types of machines which are referred as push down automata these push down automata machines are basically used in order to recognize the languages that are context free in nature so for context free languages we will be constructing machines that are push down automata in nature so we cannot use the finite state machines for push down automata we need Uh, different types of machines okay for context free language we cannot make use of same finite state machines in order to recognize context free language we require a different set of machines that are called as push down automata the question is why uh, as we have discussed about finite state machines these finite state machines as of you all know comprises of states and transitions so at any point in time when we process one particular transition we are able to process one symbol and we are able to make some decision and move from one state to another state uh, as and when our string gets processed uh, the states will keep on changing depending upon the transitions that are there in our diagram and finally we are able to comment whether a particular string is getting accepted or rejected by that particular uh, language that with with help of that particular finite state machines we are not able to store any kind of information apart from that in this diagram but when it comes to context free languages we have seen certain examples like a raised to n b raised to n where n is greater than equal to 0 we all know that this language is a context free language so for these context free language what is meaning of this language meaning of this language is that the number of a's are equal to number of b's so if you don't have a and b the string that gets generated from this language becomes null when the value of n is 1 the string that gets generated from this language is ab when the value of n is 2 the string that gets generated from this language is aabb and so on 3 times a 3 times b 4 times a 4 times b and so on so for recognizing these type of language we all should be able to understand that the number of a's should be maintained as equal to number of b's so whenever we are processing these strings to check for its acceptance in our language while processing b we should be able to recollect how many a's have been processed in our string so unless and until we are able to store the number of a's information we will not be able to check whether the same number of b's are there in our string and in order to store that this particular finite state machine is not having any capability to perform that storage so for performing this storage we use a component called as stack we use a component called as stack say for example you want to check whether this string aabb is getting accepted by your uh, language or not so in this the number of a's is equal to number of b's so what we will do is whenever we'll start process the processing this string we will be using the stack accordingly whenever i process this a i'll be pushing this a on stack whenever i get another a i am pushing this a on stack whenever i get b i am going to pop an equivalent a from my stack when i get second b i am going to pop this equivalent a from my stack so my stack becomes empty and i have no more symbols to be processed so i am able to comment now that the number of a's are equal to number of b's so this is how we use this stack in order to maintain our number of a's in the string this number of a's for this particular language a raised to n b raised to n is representing certain history we can say this is some kind of history information which we try to represent in the form of stack so we can also comment that stack is useful in order to store certain kind of history for that particular language what is the history for a raised to n b raised to n 
history is number of a's so if i am able to store number of a's in my stack while processing b i can easily check the count of b's whether it is equal to number of a's by popping one respective a for each respective b that i am processing so this is how we are going to make use of stack in order to store history information so that we'll be able to comment whether the string is getting accepted or rejected the other components of finite state machines will remain as it is which are required in order to process the symbols which are coming from our string so basically what we can comment is push down automata is a combination of finite state machines and stack so this finite state machines will be helpful for us in order to process symbols so we have to process a a b b so for this will require a diagram through which we will be able to progress from one state to another state which will be very similar to that of finite state machines and while doing so we also want to maintain history information so for maintaining that history information we are going to make use of stack so this stack will help us in order to maintain the history information whereas the finite state machines will be able to uh, help us in performing the transitions of our input symbol so this combination together will give us a pda push down automata so now let us mathematically define what do we mean by push down automata so push down automata is a machine m which is basically a seven tuple what is push down automata push down automata is a seven tuple defined as capital q alphabet q0 a delta to and z0 push down automata is a seven tuple machine m given as capital q alphabet q0 a delta to and z0 where these five elements as you can see are very similar to that of finite state machines and these two symbols which are new which are new in our seven tuple are basically belonging to stack which is an additional component that we are learning here let us see meaning of all these tuples q is as we all know it is finite set of states alphabet is set of input symbols then q0 is an initial state which is basically belonging to capital q is set of accepting states which is subset of capital q delta will be the transition function which we'll discuss a bit later to is something new which is uh, there in pda which was not there in finite state state machine this is finite set of stack symbols so your stack will be comprising of certain symbols right so here my stack is comprising of a right so a becomes uh, element of my to so to is basically representing all those symbols which are going to come in my stack so to represent finite set of stack symbols z0 is a initial stack symbol z0 is a initial stack symbol so initially uh, we will have z0 in our stack so this is how our stack will look initially before starting any diagram so a stack which is initially having z0 so we will keep on performing certain push and pop operation on this stack so z0 is initial stack symbol and so this will be part of your to so this is belonging to your to and finally we will be having the seventh tuple 